Death must die is an early access roguelike bullet hell that is trying to be unique in a sea of early access roguelike bullet hells. My name's Yuo, and today we see if Death must die succeeds in this task or if they drown in the pool of similar games. Death Must Die is developed and published by indie developer Realm Archive. Released on November 14th, 2023 on Early Access, the game tasks the player with surviving Death's Realm for 20 minutes. The game is not shy about its influences, one of them very clearly being Hades. But before we get in depth about the gameplay, I would like to address some minor grievances. The game has an auto attack toggle, but not an auto aim toggle. This doesn't matter for melee -like characters, but when you are playing the singular ranged character and aren't able to face roll your keyboard yet, having to aim and left click at the same time to hit certain enemies is annoying. At certain intervals, an unpassable wall of fire spawns, forcing the player into a makeshift arena. Why is it possible for bosses to fly out of this zone? It just drags the fight out longer than necessary. Now with that out of the way, what is the core gameplay? I'm glad you asked. After choosing from 5 heroes, each with 5 different variations, you venture into Death's Realm for 20 minutes before finally fighting the final boss. While in Death's Realm, you gain experience from enemies allowing you to level up and choose boons from the gods to aid you during this onslaught. You also acquire loot in the form of equipable gear from enemies. This is seemingly the main form of contention for people who enjoy or detest the game. Loot is the main form of progression in the game. There is no shop with passives to upgrade or stats to change, it's just this loot. You get better loot so you can play on a harder difficulty, so you can get better loot, so you can play on a harder difficulty, you get the picture. But what if you enjoy playing as the, let's just say the fireball chick, but you get no viable loot for her during the run? I have read that some people feel like they wasted their time doing a run since they did not get better loot for their specific character. I personally did not find it hard to gear characters for level 30 which is the max difficulty, but afterwards was annoyed that I could do multiple runs where I was unable to find upgrades for my selected character's build. There is a shop to buy and sell loot, however during my experience, the shop loot was only good for gearing up characters that were missing mythic items. The actual gameplay is enjoyable. The game has a dash button which makes it feel more like an action RPG than a walking simulator. The telegraphed enemy attacks don't need to be telegraphed for as long thanks to the dash button and it helps make the combat feel more engaging. The player is incentivized to move around the map thanks to random buffs spread throughout that last the duration of the run. Giving the player incentive to explore is a nice way to add player agency to the game and is appreciated. Unfortunately, the characters are too similar right now, specifically the melee ones. Even with the different variations, the characters feel like variations of a singular character. Take for example Krant the Barbarian. These variations don't dramatically change how Krant is played, and even if you take a more drastic one, like you can't restore life, you have plus 222 life, it does not make Grant feel unique enough compared to the other melee characters, and unfortunately this problem applies to all of them. The main problem, however, is the lack of content. The entire game is currently a singular map. Every run, the same enemies spawn at the same intervals. You know at 4 minutes you will be swarmed by green slimes, or that the Baron's hands will spawn at 7 minutes. I played this game for 13 hours to experience as much content for the review as possible. If I was just playing the game outside of my channel, I would have stopped hours ago. Unless you enjoy min-maxing your build while playing the same content over and over again, you will probably stop playing after clearing level 30 a handful of times. With that said, I do recommend buying Death Must Die, which is currently $8.99 Canadian, with an asterisk. The developers posted a content roadmap, which states they are dropping a pretty sizable update that includes a second map for the first quarter of 2024. Unless you want to dive into the game now, I would say wait for the content drop, then buy the game. Death Must Die has the skeleton of a great game, it just needs to flesh it out more with additional content, system adjustments, and additional ways to make the characters, specifically the melee ones, feel more unique from one another. I will do an updated review when the game officially launches and leaves early access, which is to be announced. So who knows, I might even be in Death's Realm at that point. If you have played Death Must Die before, or other games worth checking in this genre, post your thoughts below. I enjoyed Death Must Die specifically because they found a way to make a game in this niche not feel like a walking simulator, for the most part, and I commend them for that. If the developers release content that is on par with the current version, we could have another beloved indie darling. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you aren't, it helps the channel grow. My name's Yuo, and I'll see you in the next one.